everyone welcome back to the channel you're watching our cloud school in this video we are going to talk about azure data factory we will learn how do we create azure data factory instance from azure portal this is a very beginners video so for someone who do not know about how to start with azure data factory this video is for you we will learn how do we create the data factory instance then we will have a walkthrough of the data factory instance from the azure dashboard and we will see how do we launch the azure data factory as we know that the azure data factory is the platform as in service which means that you do not have to worry about the underneath infrastructure it is all managed by microsoft azure so you just create the instance depending upon your need you work on that particular instance and on the basis of the users you would which you perform on the instance you are going to get paid by microsoft azure i hope the concept of the platform as in service is clear to you if it is then that nothing to worry about it you are good to go and create an adf instance for that please follow me on this video to create an adf instance first of all i need to log into azure data I need to log into Azure portal as you can see on my screen I am already logged in to my Azure Active Directory tenant and the subscription so my default subscription is our cloud school which is the name of my channel now to create an ADF instance I can click I can click here on create a resource this is same as any other resource you create from this option you simply have to search for the Azure data factory right here from this search option or if you can see that the data factory instance is already available here you can simply click here so i'll click here on create new instance and that will launch the create window so here it is going to ask a couple of different questions which you need to fill in depending upon your requirements so let's fill in those requirements to provision the resource first thing you have to provide the name of the subscription i'm going to use my default subscription which, which is azure cloud so this is the subscription which i'll be using and after that you have to provide the name of the resource group in which you would like to provision the data factory instance like you create the resources in the resource group any other resources in the resource group similarly data factory also would require in resource group so let's create choose an existing resource group if you would like to create a new resource group where you want to provision these or move this or where you want to place this ADF instance, you can click here on the create hyperlink and create a new resource group. Next, you have to give a unique identifier name which will uniquely identify your data factory instance. So my data factory instance name is going to be ADF, ADF instance for the short name of Azure Data Factory and then dash the name of the organization which is the name of my project or the channel OCS our cloud school and then I will provide the name as in demo 02 because 01 name is I have already taken I have already created that next it will check this whether this name is available or not if this name is not available then that will give you an error let me show you how does it looks like this it says that the name is already been taken so I'm going to use the different name which is not available as I know that this is not available next you have to provide the region or the location in which you want to place your resource so depending upon the project or the location where you want to move your resources you have to specify that particular resource that, that particular location next you have the version so as of now the only supported version is version v2 when the azure data factory was launched in 2015 it was launched with version v1 but after but since then there were multiple modifications or improvement has been added to the have been added to the adf instance so now the latest version what is available on the adf is version v2 it might possible by the time when you are looking at this video by the time when you're watching this video there will be a future or the further upgraded versions are available but the concept remains same you can choose the version from this particular drop down as of now just one option is available so i'm going to go ahead with the default version i'll click on next 
and that will give launch to a next tab which is git configuration so that's my next page this is the option which will give you an option to create or configure your data factory instance as in git repository as of now it is selected as in configure git repository as later if i uncheck that that will give you an option repository type whether you want to configure your azure adf instance to azure devops or you configure or you want to configure it onto github so depending upon your selection you have to provide the details of these selections and then once you select that your adf instance will be linked to your github repository or azure devops repository as of now i'm not going to choose any of this selection because this selection you can anytime configure even after creating the adf and that is something which will show in the next demonstration in future so i'll keep configure git later option selected next you have the network configuration so if you have a requirement to make your adf secure like we know the behavior of any platform as in service res uh, resource like by default they are publicly available but if you would like to secure it you can secure it by applying the private endpoint configuration and restricting the network configuration so that it will block the incoming outbound outgoing traffic on this particular instance so for this demonstration i am going to keep the default option as is which is public endpoint which is this one click on next this is the advanced setting in case if you have a requirement to configure your adf with the user managed custom uh, key which is configured into a key vault then that key vault connectivity you can configure it from this advanced section next option you have it as in tags so tag, tag is something which you can specify to adf instance like you specify the tags for any other instances in azure next you have the review so that will uh, that is where you will get an opportunity to review the configuration which you specify throughout these uh, different tabs and then once you are happy you can click here on the create option so that will basically try and create an adf instance it won't take more than five to six seconds and it will create an adf instance very very quickly so the adf instance is successfully created if i just simply click here on the deployment resource this is my adf instance and that's the overview of the adf instance so like any other azure resource overview looks like we have the same experience where you can see the details of your resource like resource group in which the resource has been configured the status which is succeeded as you can see here next you have the location in which the resource has been configured the subscription the type of resource which is data factory version 2 and then you have the other settings which is data factory studio which you can launch this studio where you can configure or perform the different settings of the data factory i'll show you how do you launch this and how the launching of this data factory looks like but before that let's have a look at about the other options which are visible here on the overview so this is a monitoring section which basically displays the execution or the performance of your uh, data factory or different uh, different categories of data factory run so monitoring section as you can see here it's showing the pipeline runs in last 24 or 48 hours which you can modify and run the queries activity run trigger runs integration runtime you might be wondering what these are what is a pipeline activity run triggers integration runtime don't worry we will have a discussion of each on each of these sections so for now you can see that you can think of these as in different computation or different configuration which are available with adf and those configuration how those are behaving that is something which you can monitor with the help of this monitoring dashboard so that's at the high level summary now moving on to the next section which is activity log and like any like any other resources in azure you can see the activity log on a adf instance as well for, for an example what has been modified any is there any permission being, being added or removed on this particular instance what actions been performed on this particular instance all those sort of things 
Next, you have the access control, which is identity and access management, where you can assign a roles and permission to this particular IDF instance. For an example, if let's say your logic app or any other resource wants to have permission or want to control this resource, they might require certain level of permission and that permission you can assign from this add button or if that permission is already been assigned through some kind of automation like Azure CLI, PowerShell or, or maybe Terraform, then those role assignment you can have a look at here. You can see that default role has been assigned to my service principal which I usually use for provisioning the resources with Terraform and the permission has been inherited from the subscription. Next you have the tags. Uh, so if you would have specify the tag, then that would have been available here. Again, you can modify, add the tags even after creating the ADF instance, no issues with that. Next, you have the settings panel where you can have a look at the network configuration, the configuration which we were discussing when we were creating the ADF instance like network right now it is selected to public endpoint but anytime you want to make your ADF instance secure you can change this public endpoint to private endpoint and also you can set up the private endpoint configuration to the ADF instance. So that's not so it's not like once you create the ADF instance you can't make that ADF instance private you can do that anytime. Similarly, you have the manage identity configuration. So by default, when we have created the manage identity, when we created the ADF instance, the manage system manage identity was already been assigned to this. Now you can using this system manage identity, you can assign the role onto a different resources to, to this particular manage identity. Apart from the manage identity, which is system manage identity, you can also assign the user manage identity on this particular ADF instance. So that's another option. Next, you have the properties section. So basically properties section is the same uh, information which is given on the overview are given here. Some additional properties are also mentioned such as the manage identity, the tenant information and all those things. Next, you have the uh, quick start guide where they have given the couple of links to getting started with using of a uh, use of Azure AD, uh, Azure ADF instance. So you can anytime click on these documentation link which will launch to the Microsoft documentation and you can have a look at the documentation of how to do this and that about the ADF. Next, you have the monitoring and alert section. So if you have ever configured any alert on this ADF instance based upon the monitoring rule which you might have set. So alerts can be found here. If it is not there, anytime you can create the alerts by clicking on the create alert button from here or from here. Okay. The, then you have the monitoring or, or metric section which is same as the monitoring section. You can have monitor or perform the metrics diagnostic uh, graphical representation you can have it from here you can create a dashboard out of these monitoring dashboard uh, monitoring section right here from this particular save to dashboard but button next you have the diagnostic setting so like any other uh, pass resource or infrastructure as service resource azure or adf also supports the diagnostic settings. So there are a number of diagnostic options available with ADF. For an example, do you want to run the pipeline activity logs to be captured or as part of the diagnostic settings? Do you want to capture the trigger log, trigger run log? So depending upon your need, you can basically specify what diagnostic settings you want to use in your ADF instance. To set the diagnostic settings, you have to click here on the add diagnostic settings. You have to then specify what logs I'm interested to capture in for my ADF instance. So like I mentioned, these are the different options. Apart from this, if you want to capture everything, you can select here on the all metrics so that will call capture everything. But you have to remember that if you capture everything, then the thing is it will capture everything, but those data which has been getting logged and saved to the destination, you uh, the input read write operation you have you are going to uh, get paid for that so you have to be very careful what information you really want to log that is what you should be selecting now 
log you have selected but where you want to save or move the logs to uh, do you want to move the log to the log analytics then you have to choose this particular option do you want to move the logs to the storage account and then you have, you can choose this particular option and specify the storage account in which you want to move your logs do you want to store the log as an stream analytics then you can choose the log as an event hub or if or the last option is do you want to send the log to a partner solution or third party vendor then that is an option available as well. So as of now, I'm not going to configure any diagnostic settings for this particular section. So I'm going to leave it as is. Next, you have the logs, which is the log analytics configuration. In case if you are sending your log and uh, your Azure ADF logs to the log analytics, then from this option, you can radically write the queries. You can perform the analytical uh, insights on the ADF instance by writing the log analytics query right here from this particular window, right? Next, you have the automation tab in case if you would like to get in, let's say, costing related alerts. So the walkthrough of Azure Data Factory from the Azure portal's point of view is over. So that's it. That was it in the portal side. Now, but you may ask the question, what about the ETL, where do I configure my ETL, where do I set up my pipeline, the data transformation and all using the ADF. There is no place which you have shown to us in this video. So well, this is the place you click here and that will launch uh, Azure Data Factory Studio. So Data Factory to launch the Data Factory Studio, Microsoft Azure has reserved a subdomain. The subdomain name is adf.azure.com. You can log on to adf.azure.com and log into your Azure subscription the way you log into Azure portal, provide the name of your ADF instance and that will launch the same portal. Or if you are already logged on to Azure portal, you can simply click here and that will launch the same adf.azure.com. And you can see that in the URL, it is taking the subscription ID, resource group, the data factory instance name, and the of course the OAuth token uh, which it will be using to log into this particular instance right we can see that this is the adf instance here by clicking on these menu item you can click on you can create the uh, orchestration data transformation or ssi use package as well and then there are other menu items available such as the pipelines, asset monitoring, and, and and the other learning center options available, right? We'll have a walkthrough of all of these in our next video. This was just about the Azure portal one. I'll give you one more idea, like I'll, I'll show you one more way of opening the same Azure, like adf.azure.com. Simply you run this particular URL and that will ask you to log into the Azure subscription once you logged into a tenant you select the subscription and within the subscription whichever number of adf instances were available that you can select and click on continue that will launch the same dashboard which we have it on the previous tab there you go so that's it in this video in the next video we'll talk about what is pipeline data flow data sets power queries monitoring integration runtime and all the components of the adf pipelines or adf instance i hope you have found this useful if it is please give it a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already thanks for watching it see you in the next video